Greetings, Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher. Thanks for checking out my video. We're going to do a series on a parasite called Dientamoeba fragilis today. So let's just talk a bit, a bit about parasites in general. Many people who contact me or catch up with me as patients uh, think they've got parasites. So what are parasites? What exactly are these kind of bugs, you know? Are they politicians? Are they bad friends? Is it your mother-in-law? What is a parasite? Well, a parasite is something that takes and takes and doesn't give back. Sounds a bit like a politician, doesn't it? A really bad politician. People that just take and take everything they can and don't give it back. I mean, some movie stars are spoiled brats. They're a little bit like that, aren't they? They take everything they can. They treat people really bad. <clears throat> they trash the place and they walk out leaving a bloody mess. Well, parasites are exactly like that. Parasites confer no benefits to their host. All they do is they take and they give nothing back. They can actually create a lot of harm and damage to people. So parasites, when people think about them, they think about big worms crawling through your tummy, like huge big bugs inside. And I've had people tell me, oh, well, I saw something in my stool, you know, like this really long bug. Is it a parasite inside me? And I can feel all these worms burrowing through my intestines and... Well, I've got bad news for you if you think like that, because parasites can't usually be, be seen with the eye. You need a microscope to see them. So parasites are incredibly small. They can be transmitted generally through the um, fecal oral route. Now, that doesn't mean to say that, you know, you're doing really dirty things. That means to say if you get a parasite, often it comes down to hygiene. And we'll talk later on a little bit about transmission and about causes and things like that. So the three main common parasites that I see are Blastocystis hominis, which accounts for about 45% of irritable bowel syndrome cases, um, Dientamoeba fragilis, which accounts for about 30 to 35% of irritable bowel syndrome cases, and Giard Giardia lamblia. This is another particular kind of parasite, which accounts for a much, much smaller percentage. We're talking one and a half to two or three percent, if that. We also get cryptosporidium uh, and other, other kinds of bugs, but we don't really worry too much about those sort of things. So, Dientamoeba fragilis, it's estimated in, if we look at US alone, we've got between one to three percent of the population will have an infection with Dientamoeba. It's an exceedingly small parasite. It's very tiny. And the interesting thing about this parasite is, is it doesn't really come in a cyst form. So it doesn't come like in an egg form, like, you know, something with a hard outer shell. Dientamoeba doesn't do this, but blasto does. So blasto can survive a lot longer outside of a host than dientamoeba can. Dientamoeba dies very quickly when it's exposed to air and water and things like that, whereas blasto doesn't. And that probably accounts for the extra, you know, 10, 15 percent um, of cases we see in, in irritable bowel syndrome. Many doctors, in fact, um, don't even believe that dientamoeba is a really big problem because so many people do have it and have got no real symptoms. But I can tell you now, I know a lot of people with dientamoeba who've got a lot of problems, which we'll talk about a bit later on. And it's estimated that between 19, right up to 70 percent of specific populations have got dientamoeba. And these are people particularly who live in unsanitary conditions or very crowded conditions or certain types of third world conditions. Um, so yeah, it, it can be a real problem. So let's just talk a little bit about um, the different signs and symptoms in another video. We're going to talk about treatment. We're going to talk about causes. In fact, I've got a whole list of questions here. We're going to look at natural treatment, best foods to eat, worst foods to eat, um, tests and diagnosis, etc., etc. So let's get into this video series. So if you're interested in dying to amoeba, please check out the next video. Thanks for tuning in.